drink shirt? Boys uh, love Uh, no. No, I also My wife know. might what take issue with that choice. choice. She might be uh, mildly concerned that that wasn't a family-centric move. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I doubt it, because we are so busy at these things. We're on the clock, sir. <laughs> We're in the coal mines. I wish. We're working. I wish you could, but... Generate products. Yeah, but we'll have one for us. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Hi, Robin Rich. Hello, person. Hello. Uh, I love you, first of all. Love um, you, too. So... Rich was also on VR, so I want to know what your uh, experience was like on those shows. That's all that every night. <laughs> uh, that was OG NCIS, right? Uh, yeah, it was actually really great. I think it was second or third season of that show, so it was relatively young for that show. And uh, my memory uh, was that it was really cool. It was a great part and fun to play. It's always fun to play. Douchebags. Um, but uh, Mark Harmon, well, I know, I'm oddly good at it. Uh, Mark Harmon was just a delight, a real professional, and he, uh, when you're a guest on a show, it's like first day of school. You don't know anybody, you're a little disoriented. You don't know where they, anything is. And um, I've done it so much now, and it, 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 it always helps when the main actors on the show are gracious. It just makes the whole experience better. That's an adjourner, prime example. Uh, so good, so so gracious. Uh, Mark Harmon was like, thank you so much for doing this show. Uh, we just we really appreciate you taking your time, and we're honored to have you. It was just like so nice, and really like made me feel comfortable. And I think that's one of the reasons that show ran for so long. He said he was a great number one on the whole show. I got a funny Mark Harmon story for you. Okay. And so in that same same vein, my good buddy and you know him, Rob Bolton. Uh, Rob Bolton is an actor, a buddy of mine, for years and years, and I'm still a buddy of mine, and still a fine, fine actor. This is going back to our 20s. He did an episode of NCIS with the big guest star of the week, military guy, has a tough scene, and when it was over, and you're going to have to go with me on a journey to a world where email wasn't the thing, <laughs> and texting didn't exist in America, and we communicated with a device that was wired in your home. And they called it, and I'm not making up this word, a telephone. Um, Rob Bolton got a phone call from Mark Harmon saying, Hey man, I just, Mark Harmon, I just watched the cut, and I just want to say, you were fantastic. You did a great job, and you should be really proud. To which my buddy Rob said, Uh huh, very funny. Who was a nice one, Rich. And he goes, Rich, no, this is Mark Harmon. And he's like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, my well, uncle, Mr. Harmon. Thank you for calling. He's like, Mark, really fuck off. And he's like, I, and he goes, I don't know why you're being so adversarial. Oh and at that God. moment, he realized, this is Mark Harmon on the phone. Oh my God. And he's like, Mr. Harmon, I'm so sorry. I have a friend who, I thought, uh, this is, if you knew him, it would make total sense. He would be laughing. I thought it was my friend Rich. Pretending to be you, and he's like, "Why would your friend pretend to be me?" And he's like, "I don't, I don't know, sir. I'm just so sorry. You don't know Rich. I'm just so sorry." See, and that story is horrifying. I know. And I blame you. Yeah. That's what you make us into. And it's another rock. <laughs> yeah, it's another rock. Um, wow. Well, uh, yeah. So. Well, it speaks to how nice part it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, ER. I don't remember much about that. I think it was in there for a day, but um, it was a massively huge show at the time. Huge. So getting one line on ER as a young, struggling actor, was massive. I, could, I would just be on that set, and the little amount of time I was there was, I mean, it was a phenomenon. It was, a, it was the biggest thing on TV for a long time, and it was really cool to be on that set, and even have any moment on there ever. Thank you. Thank you and your friend for watching the classics. Yes? Um, what was your guys' least favorite scene to film on Supernatural? Lee's favorite scene to film, Robert. Lee's favorite scene. It can't be a scene I directed you in. <laughs> it cannot be a scene in which you uh, reference anything about Gabriel. Um, <laughs> I'll stick all my answers on it. Um, 
you know, I, I really didn't have, I never had a scene that I, I didn't enjoy. There, I had you enjoyed that scene in the casino, the real booze in their glass. Yeah, that was fun. Boozing it up like a boozer. Like Richard said earlier, like we just so, feel so lucky to work the work of the show. We had nothing but positive memories about the entire experience. There were some scenes that were silly, some scenes were sort of serious. I have great memories about it all. I guess if anything, um, my very last scene that I shot was kind of anticlimactic because we shot the whole thing, the whole fight I had with the boys at the end, and me, Alex, taking the god out of me. And, and it was very emotional, so did that scene where the car drove off and I'm in the dirt, like, begging them not to leave me with my, my demise. And that was difficult to shoot, but as an actor it felt fulfilling. And then the next day I come back to shoot my last scene on Supernatural ever, because they shoot everything out of water, right? So the last thing I had to shoot was me in the middle of a field, snapping my fingers and making the dog disappear. It's mean. <laughs> Mean and cruel, and not the way I want to remember the show. Isn't that, isn't that something you added? <laughs> I remember. Yeah, you, you were supposed to play the dog, and then the plane turned around. <laughs> you added the dog man. I never in a million years. No. You were just I did. You did, you did, you did. No, I didn't. Mark Harmon says he did. No, he didn't. <laughs> And I sat the thing of the dog went away, so it was kind of an antique like, back and like, and that's a red bone rub, and the dog, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like, you know what? That's a queer least favorite scene. I do have a least favorite scene. My least favorite scene was uh, fighting Michael in the alternate universe. Oh. Because we had no time to design a fight. So the fight was ridiculous. <laughs> and and there's the moment where they go, I'm like, I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight these Michaels so you guys can get back to the real world. To which, boys like, go do it. I'm like, I have to be brothers, what it stands for, and blah, blah, blah. And I run down to fight Michael, and they stand there and watch me get annihilated. And then go. And I'm like, hey, hey, blank blanks. If I'm gonna sit here and get my ass handed to me by my brother, how about do the thing that I asked you to do while I was getting my ass handed to me and leave, rather than sit there and waste all the time I just bought you, standing there. Yes. Meanwhile, the fight, I mean, they didn't have a plan. They had no time. From a production standpoint, it was super frustrating. And I kept asking production, like, are we going to rehearse a fight? Like, we're going to do it on the day. Like, on the day, okay, cool. Uh, oh. my stunt guy, you know, not new stunt guys. I'm like, you're gonna have me, Christian Keys, fight no stunt guys and no plan. And literally, like, one of those things, like, you kind of do this, you kind of miss, you do this, you miss, and then he kills you. Like, it's a three move, like, that's an Archangel fight, <laughs> Archangel brother fight. Yeah. I directed a fight in Lucifer, two angels fighting, and it was epic, and it was wires. We didn't have the time to do that kind of thing, but I would like to have had it be a more... I would like for people to wonder for a millisecond if Gabriel had a shot, because you don't wonder for one iota. <laughs> I got this guy, oh! <laughs> so that, I didn't love, that was my least favorite scene. Thank you. Thank you. That's funny. I like the idea that you go to Lucifer and then you orchestrate this huge battle because you're mad at that battle that you go, right? Like, Rich, I think this is a bit much. It's not too much. I'll tell you what it's too much! <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. First of all, I just want to say thank you for the podcast. I love you both. And I just have a question that um, uh, I want to know your uh, favorite uh, character on the show, except yours. Well, before we get into Rob talking about my character, let's talk about <laughs> the fact that Rob and I I do indeed host a podcast called Supernatural Then and Now. It's a Supernatural podcast where we watch every single episode because though we are very, very committed actors, we did not see all the episodes of Supernatural. We didn't see most of the episodes of Supernatural. We pretty much only saw a handful of episodes of Supernatural because there's so flippin' many. So, started in episode one, we we're moving our way through, and along the way, we have the best of the talent on there is our guests. The, the, the creators, the writers, the actors, the crew of every department 
comes on our show and talks about what the experience is like making not just a specific episode, but the series overall. Jared's been on, Jim's been on, Keisha, Eric, 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 and you name it, your favorite guest stars, your favorite crew members, the things you do not know about TV are revealed in this podcast. So if you're your favorite, then check out SPN. Then and now. You were saying about here. I feel like the rule is we can't say each other either. Okay, I'll give you a pass. We'll just go ahead and acknowledge it would be Gabriel, but for the parameters put upon us. And I understand your hands are tied. My favorite character is not one that's uh, been on quite yet in our rewatch, but I just know that it will be my favorite character. And that's Rowena. Yeah! Don't mind if I say, get up. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. You remember when you lusted after my wife in her red pants? Heck yeah. In a hotel lobby? Yeah. Okay, sure. Two weeks ago. Um, and, yeah. Come on. And then you got to, you know, make TV love to her. I know. We made out. We didn't have to make out, but we thought it would be better than seeing. <laughs> It wasn't like you and Matt Cohen twice, you know? I felt like that scene. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't. <laughs> I, I just did my director chat this morning with some great people who had great questions. It was super fun. And it brought to mind the character. Remained one of my favorite characters in the, the history of Supernatural for many reasons. Some personal, some uh, creative for the show. Uh, Sully. We love Nate Jordan playing that role, we love that role, we love the character, we love that episode. Obviously it's near and dear to my heart as the director of it, but he was just a fantastic actor. It's a fantastically written character with Jenny Klein. I love that character. Thank you for your question. Um, also, I just want to say we're talking about podcasts that uh, if, you, if you haven't gotten sick of us yet, there's another podcast called Kings of Con. Well, Kings of Con, the podcast. And Rich and I, uh, well, we, we're, it's just him and I being ourselves. Yeah. What we try to do with Supernatural, Supernatural Did It Now is teach you things. And what we try to do with Kings of Con, the podcast, is make sure you learn nothing. Yeah, unteach you. Yeah. Make you unlearn. Yeah. But uh, it's super fun. It's super fun. And we get into serious discussions, funny discussions. All very real, it's, very us. It's weirdly hilarious. To the point where I forget that I say certain things and the people at the convention are like, Hey, yeah, how's the thing? How's your... Oh, shit, I, I talked about that. Right, I know. Like, How do you know? It is a conversation that we let you in on. It's like being uh, right there with us and wishing you had not arrived. No kidding. It's, uh, it's like... Uh, I write jingles, there's music, it's fun. There's probably dancing, there's a podcast, right. you can't see it. Uh, but please join us for KingCon the podcast. That's KingCon the podcast. And by the way, all of these podcasts are free. All right, your question. What was the hardest scene to do when you were on Supernatural? Hardest scene to do, Robert. Hardest. I'll give one real quick. Please. That was really, that ball drop is a great scene, a scene that I love. I don't know if it was the hardest, because I, I really think about the right thing that's all hard. But we had this shot that I really wanted to do with Rob. That was really hard, and I wanted to like give a little shout out to Jose, our camera, our focus puller on this one. Because I had Rob walking at the camera. Remember all the TVs? And I blocked Rob very specifically because I wanted this like pace in the room and get angry. And then he was gonna turn back and walk towards the cameras and land in this frame that would like eyebrow and chin and say, time to start canceling shows. Right? So Rob had this very stayed on it the whole time. It doesn't seem hard. I, you guys watch, you're like, how hard could that be? But Rob had the time his acting, the land of his beat, and Jose had to be on the focus. So for those who don't know, TV camera doesn't focus like your camera. T um, the focus is over somewhere else, operated by somebody else, who's using measurement, who's looking at feet and distance to the lens to, to dial focus in. So they're watching the actor move, they have markings on the floor, and they're using this dial to try to get the focus to try as that actor moves. That's all these cameras function. And Rob walking towards this thing and the land in that frame where it had to be the best acting take paired with the perfect focal take, which was a bitch. 
and I, we didn't really took like two or three takes, we didn't take that many. But I remember when we were done, we were like, trio of high fives for everybody in that scene, but then it was just, it was just such a cool thing. Yeah, that was cool. And, and I mean, he's so good at what he does, and talk about pressure. Jose? Yeah. Okay. Oh, pressure. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, um, every time it was cold outside in Vancouver and you had to pretend it wasn't cold, that was hard. You know, I remember there's a scene where, in uh, Don't Call Me Shirley, where Curtis uh, and I are walking like along the beach in the water, and it was just, it should have been a beautiful day in the script it was, but it was, it was cloudy and cold, and we said to roll with it. It rained a little bit. But I'm God, so I can't feel cold. I can't feel kick at the air here. So I had to like, you know, walk with confidence and not be cold. No, that was hard. Uh, uh, I would handle the cold well, Rich. I'm not a big fan of the cold, everybody. Uh, anyway, but thank you very much. Thank you for your Let's take one more, Robert, if we have a moment. Let's okay. do it. All right, young lady. Hi, this is my first adventure. Same. What if God was Robert Bennett? <laughs> so in real life, if I were God, first thing I'd do. What's the first thing you do, Robert? Uh, uh, the first thing I'd do. What is number one on that list? I'm sure there's a lot of things you do. But at the top of that list, by the number one, uh, period, space, space, well, what do you think? I would get rid of all war. No more, everybody! Thank you so much. We can all live in peace. Live in peace. No matter what our differences are. No matter you have differences. So they can have their own, you know, religion, their own philosophy, their own culture, their own race, their own sexuality, everything. Well, everybody. That would be my world. Exactly. And then I think the second thing I do is make myself taller than Jerry. Yeah. One of those two things is possible. And the other one is going to be called up Jerry. Yeah. Um, All right, you're God, Rich. I'm God. First thing I do, go back to that episode where Rob was God decided not to bring Gabriel back and he had a thing. And I bring Gabriel back. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Because then we get to work together. And then we have actually have God and Gabriel on screen together. The way Hollywood did. So you go ahead solve war. Right. I totally screen that, right. but People are still dying, but hey. We're on screen together. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Rob Bennett right there.